It's the Law Show on CL 650. A comprehensive look at everything you need to know about the law. That's Kylie Minogue's sister, right? Danny Minogue? Yeah, Danny Minogue. Good choice, Dwayne. Good choice. Can't get you out of my head. Uh, we're talking about uh, personal injury here on the Law Show on CL 650. Uh, Scott Stanley and Kevin Gourlay from Murphy Batista. Now, earlier I called you experts, but in the eyes of the law society, that's not allowed? We, we No, we can't claim that we're experts. We can't say we're experts, and we shouldn't be encouraging anyone to say that we are. I mean, well, I would suggest that you know more about the law than I do, therefore I look to you as an expert. That's not the way the law society sees it? Well... I mean, that may be a layperson's perspective, but a lawyer can't. Uh, we're not like a profession, like a doctor, where they actually have categories of expertise. Right. Lawyers, you know, I could do a will and do it really, really poorly, mm -hmm. but I would be incompetent to do that. So, But we don't have categories of expertise, so we can't call ourselves experts. I, I've, you know, I've done this for 20 years. I've done the biggest case in BC history. Our firm is the biggest firm. Uh, we probably have one of the higher track records in terms of trial success, but I can't call myself an expert in personal injury correct Isn't that yeah. interesting yeah. so we learned something today that's that's yeah. good to know so um we're talking about concussions now uh, you mentioned that the majority of people have a, a normal outcome they come back to being their, their regular selves so what is the timeline on that and what what do you need to do to get there in your non-expert opinion the the timelines vary hugely uh, most people will get back to normal within within weeks mm -hmm. um some hopefully within days, uh, but it's once you start getting to the six month mark, to the one year mark, and, and ultimately past two years, when the, the rates of recovery, the rates of people returning to 100% uh, get much lower. Now, what is it for soft tissue injuries for, for uh, whiplash? Is that something that, that typically uh, can, that's another gray area, isn't it? Well, I it's funny for concussions and soft tissue injury, the, j the consensus amongst doctors is if you're not better in two years, you're not going to get better. Mm. And I think that's probably accurate for soft tissue injuries. I'm not sure I believe that's the case with brain injuries because I, I think the window for recovery is probably longer. It's probably more like two to five years. That's my personal observation. And I'm not a doctor, but just from what I've seen with my client population, I think people continue to make recovery uh, beyond two years. And you have to have that corroborated by family members to say, are they getting back to the old Bob or Joe or Stanley that we used to know, right? I, I think your chances of a spontaneous neurological recovery are probably going to drop off sharply after two years. But what people achieve is a functional recovery. So they, you know, that one theory is that the brain, once injured, learns to reprogram and reroute itself. And mm -hmm. it, just, it just needs some time to do that. It re-engineers itself. And I, I think that probably happens. But to the extent it doesn't, I think people just figure out ways to deal with their symptoms, to work around them. Well, that is the body's way of compensating. I think so, yeah. And I, I say to people who have children who are not, you know, they have different issues with learning. Well, they might not be, they might be able to go to law school and be a lawyer or a doctor or what have you, but they're going to be able to compensate and be good at something else because that's their body's way of overcoming their learning problem and they end up being maybe the best musician the world's best drummer or something, right? You never know. Absolutely. And it's amazing how the, uh, the body and the brain can, can stick handle through a problem. I mean, doing this work for 20 years, you really understand how, the, how indomitable the human spirit is. It'll fight. It'll try to repair itself. You know, it doesn't give up. It doesn't fail. It doesn't seek frivolous com compensation the way ICBC and other insurance companies would have you believe. Uh, there's a, an instinct to fight and survive in every one of us. So we had the boss on uh, before, Joe Murphy, talking about this and the, and the, and the, uh, the campaign ICBC had around fraud and uh, everybody, everybody's out trying to screw ICBC. And his claim is that, uh, you know, there's <laughs> it's not the case. There's all these checks and balances in the system to make sure that doesn't happen. So you must have the same situation when it comes to soft tissue injuries or concussions that nobody wants to go through this, right? Is that... You're both nodding your head. Yeah. Yeah, of course. I mean, when you when you go through uh, an injury claim like that, your life gets put under the m under a microscope, and uh, and I certainly can't say that 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 has never happened. But the uh, there's always somebody who's going to try it, right? If there's an if there's an opportunity and a loophole, someone will try and take yeah, it. I think that's fair to say that there are there's always going to be somebody who's going to try it. Mm -hmm. But I think that the the percentage of the population that's walking around out there that's actually willing to put themselves through that 
is is very very small and usually they're going to get caught doing so and rightly so uh, you know i think most lawyers I, I like to think anyways don't have any interest in being a party to that kind of thing and uh and if we have those we had those concerns about the client they wouldn't be our client for very long well you hear those stories of someone is in a rear ender and they get out and they're grasping their neck oh my neck my neck and I'm going to see my lawyer and, you know, I don't, that doesn't happen though, does it? it, it well, it really can't happen. I mean, if for us, uh, what a lot of people don't understand is for someone to do that, I mean, they'd have to come up to our big ivory tower <laughs> and look me in the eye and lie to me. And I'm, I mean, I've been a lawyer for 20 years. People lie to me every day. It's usually the bad guys on the other end. Oh, right? okay. So I got a pretty good BS detector and I cannot put anybody on the stand that I think is going to tell a lie. Ethically, I cannot do that. So for this to go down, the lawyer would have to be in on it, and I, I just, I just can't see that. I mean, what but I you see have a, such a big firm right. with the biggest cases and the, you know, arguably the best track record. Why would you put that in jeopardy? Well, a good track, exactly. I'm not going to jeopardize my entire portfolio of work for a client that I think is not truthful. I mean, what, what ICBC and insurance companies say is fraud or exaggeration is is not. There are people that amplify their symptoms. And uh, you know, I just did a trial last month where there was this lady that injured her neck and it was quite bad and then all of a sudden her arm was sore and then her leg was sore and people say, well, how can that be other than the fact she's lying? Well, what the defense doctor said, the defense had a doctor and I put him on the stand and I put the literature to him and what happens, Zach, is if someone has been exposed to pain for a long period of time, their nerves react to that. Nerves are our friends. They tell us we're in pain, don't do things, rest. And if you are in pain for long periods of time, your entire nervous system be can become overreactive to the point where you feel symptoms elsewhere. And so that's not someone who's exaggerating. That's just someone who's having a sensation that's probably related to a, um, the, the first area that was well, I, I painful. Well, I know because I, I have uh, you know, ongoing back and neck problems. I go and see physiotherapists and massage therapists and it's just genetics i don't have yeah. a particular i have a long back and short legs it's quite a look <laughs> um but uh you know then they go to my chiropractor and i said you know this is hurting he says well your body's overcompensating for your sore shoulder and uh you know you can draw a t on the upper left hand side it's sore on the bottom right hand side will be sore that's that's what they call it so you your body does once again overcompensate for things mm -hmm. the brain compensates if it's if it's had an injury and your body compensates, if you're injured your leg, your other leg is going to be doing all the work, right? Absolutely. Well, the, the other thing is people tend to catastrophize. There's just some personalities that catastrophize. Like, I mean, my grandfather was, you know, shelled in the Philippines. That guy didn't complain about anything. No. But there's people that have had different experiences, right? Um, I mean, and psychology and psychiatric injuries play a huge role in this. I mean, what I think is more common than is diagnosed is people have really severe psychiatric reactions to being injured for prolonged periods of time, like conversion disorders where, you know, and actually this is a risk with people that have got brain injuries. If a person doesn't have a brain injury, or even if they do, and they're told you've got a brain injury and they're not reassured, they will go off and perseverate and think that their, br their, their brain is bleeding within, and they'll go on to develop a very severe conversion disorder sometimes, which is actually way worse than a brain injury could ever so possibly be. So can you be. back that up? What what, what does a conversion disorder mean? They, they actually believe they have something else? So a conversion disorder is a psychological or psychiatric condition where a person has a physical sensation or symptom that they perceive and feel to be real, mm -hmm. but it doesn't have an organic or a physiological explanation. It's basically like having a virus in your on your computer. Your brain has a virus that's convincing it that it's injured when it's not. So the sensations are real to them, but they're not physically real. And um, another colleague at the firm, we just did a trial where this lady was completely incapacitated. She could hardly walk because she had been misdiagnosed by her doctors as having a, had a concussion when she didn't. And she went on to develop a very, very severe and intractable conversion disorder. Way worse than any brain injury I've seen. Wow, that's interest interesting. So... Uh what do you do w in those situations? Like, how do you prove that that's the case and the person isn't just, well, th I guess in reality, they are imagining it, but the brain is so powerful that it, these symptoms manifest themselves, right? That, it's exactly what you tell them. You basically tell the jury or the judge that what my cl everything my client is going to tell you is simply, I it's, it's true, 
but it's not real. Mm -hmm. And you just have to work backwards from there. That's fascinating. Never a dull day at your office. No. <laughs> <laughs> it really is fascinating stuff. Scott Stanley and Kevin Gurley are my guests, uh, personal injury uh, lawyers at uh, Murphy Batista. And we'll continue our conversation about uh, outcomes, concussions, brain injuries, and you name it when we return next on The Law Show on CL650. There's more of the show still ahead. This is The Law Show on CL650.